Notebooks, pencils, and erasers. Will masks be added to the supply list this year? It depends on where the county your school learns is. And it's still a potential tropical cyclone, but it could be Tropical Storm Fred later today. I'll show you the latest from Tropical Cyclone 6. And they're known for their car vending machines. Today at noon, why they won't be able to sell any cars in Wake County until next year. Your number one source for local news. This is WRAL, coverage you can count on. Right now at noon, new information from the National Hurricane Center. The latest storm this season could form within the next few hours. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Micaiah Thurman in for Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Great to have you along. We are keeping an eye on the Caribbean right now as that system forms. We're going to let that settle in and we quickly send things over to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner with this new update and the name this storm could take, Elizabeth. That's right. It could be Tropical Storm Fred at some point later this afternoon or tonight. Thought maybe it would happen at the 11 o'clock advisory, but I'll show you why it didn't coming up. Let's talk about where it is right now. It is 220 miles southeast of Puerto Rico right now, which is right here. So the uh, the, the, the waves, the rain, the, uh, the winds are headed that way very quickly. It is moving northwest at 18 miles per hour, but still has winds at 35 miles per hour. 38 miles per hour would make this a tropical storm. So it's very, very close. This is a look at the forecast track. And notice by 8 p.m. it has 40 mile per hour winds. That puts it over the top and makes it a tropical storm. And again, the name would be Fred. We'll continue to follow the storm. And notice it may weaken a little bit as it comes across some of the bigger islands of the Caribbean. Uh, because of the friction, it may begin to weaken the storm a little bit. But it does look like it strengthens and potentially heads up here into the Gulf of Mexico with 60 mile per hour winds by Sunday morning. It's possible that if it follows this path that it could push some rain into North Carolina and we'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Take a look at the hurricane hunters that came into the storm earlier and found 35, 30, 30 to 35 mile per hour winds. They also didn't find a closed circulation and it has to have both of those things in order to become a tropical storm. That is likely later this afternoon and again we'll talk more about what impacts we could see in North Carolina coming up. Elizabeth, thank you. A live look right now at the White House where President Biden will get an update on our nation's hurricane preparedness. This afternoon, he'll receive a briefing from the leaders of FEMA, Homeland Security, and his COVID response team. They're expected to discuss the importance of getting vaccinated ahead of peak hurricane season and how it could affect disaster response efforts. And I'm Brian Trader in the WRL Live Center. We're watching live pictures from the floor of the U.S. Senate where just a few minutes ago, senators passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. And this was a bipartisan vote, final vote 69 to 30. It means 19 Republicans said yes, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. The deal includes about $550 billion in investments in infrastructure in this country over the next five years. It now moves to the House where it has a more un certain future. We're working to learn more about how our senators from North Carolina voted. I'll have an update on that coming up a little later. Children across the triangle are getting ready to head back to school at the same time as COVID cases are surging and the Delta variant spreading. WRL's Matt Tallham is talking with parents and doctors about this troublesome timeline. He's live in Raleigh with what doctors say schools should do to keep the kids safe. Matt. Yamakaya yeah, students will be required to wear masks in Wake County Public Schools, including here at Sow Elementary. Doctors tell us for kids who are too young to get vaccinated, these masks really are the best defense against the virus and the variant to avoid outbreaks when they go back to school. Most school systems in our area are requiring masks. They are optional in Johnston County Public Schools. Dr. Danny Benjamin with Duke University expects we'll see an increase in cases if schools and students are not taking precautions. If there's not a mask mandate and your child is under 12, then the risk of acquiring COVID is high, but the risk of death from COVID is low. We checked with several hospitals in central North Carolina. There are very few children hospitalized with COVID right now. UNC Health has the most with four children in hospital beds with the virus. But a UNC pediatrician says that a bigger concern is non-COVID respiratory illnesses. So these illnesses that sim are similar to COVID, they have similar symptoms, but they're actually seeing kids coming in with those and not COVID. Doctors are urging anyone 
12 and up to get that vaccine. They say that really is the best line of defense against this virus heading back into school. All right, Matt Talham reporting live for us in Raleigh. Thank you. And today we're seeing more long lines at some Wake County testing sites. Several people were turned away yesterday at the departure drive site. Drivers say they waited an hour to get tested. Wake County Public Health says it's looking into expanding testing hours and adding sites. WREL spoke to one woman who wants the vaccine but hasn't been cleared to get it due to severe allergies. She doesn't understand why people who can choose not to. And I've always been kind of safe, you know, waiting for uh, the day for me to get vaccinated or when I got my OK to be vaccinated. But um, this is what happened. You know, just like I said, you just have to be safe out here. The county is urging people to order a free at-home testing kit online. It's sent to you overnight and they say it's just as effective. Durham County is getting a new batch of summer cash cards after running out twice in one week. The public health department tweeted that it ran out of the vaccine incentives at its clinic, but it will be restocked as of this noon. Anyone who got the shot yesterday will have the option to have the card emailed to them this weekend. And new at noon, there's new data that shows COVID-19 vaccines among pregnant women have no adverse reactions. Research shows almost 140,000 pregnant women have voluntarily joined the CDC's COVID-19 vaccine pregnancy registry, and they've done so since December of last year. Cape Fear doctors say vaccines, getting vaccinated while pregnant is, among, is a concern among the patients. They say, though, data shows no increased risk of miscarriage, birth defects, preterm birth or stillbirth. And doctors say the risk of pregnancy complications is much higher if patients get a COVID infection than it is with the vaccine. They add rumors that vaccines cause infertility are unfounded. Right now at noon, we're working to learn more about the condition of a person hit while walking on New Bern Avenue earlier today. The entire eastbound direction of New Bern was closed near Wake Med at 9 this morning. At least 10 Raleigh police vehicles were at the scene. No information was available about the pedestrian or car involved. Trinity Road near Trinity Woods Drive is set to reopen any minute now after a crash knocked down power lines in the area. Early morning crashes left hundreds without power, which is now back on for the majority of customers. Police say a car left the road and ended up in a ditch, leaving three power lines stretched across the road. The road remained closed for several hours as crews worked to repair the power pole. Uh, Raleigh police are sharing safety tips after a string of dog attacks across Wake County recently. In a partnership with the Animal Control Unit, the department shared the following tips today in a video on Twitter. Language is a big key. Um, of course, you can look for certain signs on the dog. Uh, don't, if it's staring at you a whole lot and its ears are back and its tail's really straight up and it's very stiff and squared off to you, those are all can be aggressive stances with dogs. Several dog attacks have occurred in recent months within our viewing area, some of which have been fatal. A WRL investigative report showed North Carolina doesn't have a statewide database of animals that have bitten people. Just into the WRL Live Center moments ago, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that he is resigning. It came after a briefing earlier this morning from his lawyer in which he defended the governor against that report from the attorney general released last week saying that it had evidence that he had sexually harassed multiple women. The attorney at the time said that it contained errors, said the report was biased, it omitted evidence. A few minutes later, Governor Cuomo addressed the state saying that he did offend multiple multiple women. But moments ago, he says that he is going to step down from office. The resignation takes place in a couple of weeks. We're working to gather more information. I'll have an update coming up in a few minutes. Big news there, Brian. Thank you. Well, the company known for car vending machines is banned from selling cars in Wake County until next year. An attorney representing the North Carolina DMV tells WREL News the agency sued Carvana based on a consumer complaint and investigation. The DMV revoked Carvana's dealer's license for violating dealer licensing laws, specifically for failing to deliver titles to DMV, selling a car without a state inspection,
and issuing out-of-state temporary tags for a vehicle sold to a person in North Carolina. The DMV reached an agreement with Carvana, temporarily suspending its licenses for Wake County's location until January 29th, 2022. Well, let's get a look at stocks this morning. Things in the green certainly trending in the right direction after starting out slow. Dow Jones up more than 132 points this noon. One of the biggest fast food chains in the country plans to fill openings locally by the end of today. WRL's Casey Cunningham is at a McDonald's in Clayton to explain the struggle to fill those jobs. Today, you can walk into any McDonald's location and do an on-the-spot job interview. I talked with a family who owns 13 different McDonald's locations in our area. They say they've had a tough time, like many other restaurants, finding enough people to work. It's been really tough and unlike any other um, you know, period or, or trouble that we've gone through in the past. Um, you know, we just have to keep adapting and um, you know, trying different ways to get people in the door and, and uh, recruit them and add them to our teams. The Hubner family is looking to hire between 200 and 250 employees at all of their different locations, and they're offering incentives to get people in the door. This includes what you're seeing on your screen here now, a sign-on bonus up to $1,000, depending on the position. They're also offering health care benefits for managers and flexible hours if you just want to work a couple hours a day. McDonald's is not the only place hiring. Our WREL TechWire jobs report was just released. Look at this. The Labor Department is reporting a record of 10 million job openings in the United States. Just here in Wake County, there are about 35,000 openings, and that number, every time we check it, it keeps going up. You can check out more job openings on WREL TechWire. Today's hiring event here at McDonald's goes until 7 this evening, and if you can't show up in person, you can also text apply to this number over here, and we'll have some more information over on WREL.com. Casey Cunningham, WREL News in Clayton. Coming up next at noon, evictions are on hold across the country, but there is still uncertainty why people are still in limbo about where they live. Also, hundreds of thousands of people are at a motorcycle rally in South Dakota. The controversy over merchandise being sold there. Plus, Plus FEMA is sending out a national alert tomorrow. What you need to know about this test. Download the new WRAL streaming apps on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and Android TV. On July 23, 1993, basketball superstar Michael Jordan's father, James Jordan, was murdered in North Carolina. This is the father of the most famous athlete on the planet, and on his 57th birthday, he was an unidentified dead man in the middle of nowhere. From WRAL Studios, available now is Follow the Truth where we dig into the story of the James Jordan murder and the man who says he didn't do it. I know that if this was not Michael Jordan's father, I wouldn't be in prison. We'll question the evidence. Is it possible for a man to be shot in his car and authorities not find any blood? Our ballistics expert says it couldn't have happened. Shed light on the mystery that has always surrounded the murder. Whether his financial dealings could have had anything to do with his death. And uncover bombshell new developments. Here we are a quarter century later in the back cover on this whole murder case isn't yet closed. Follow the truth on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Welcome back this noon. Across the country, evictions are on pause after the CDC announced a new federal moratorium. Still, though, problems persist. Stephen Gowen is in Cleveland with more on the rental woes and uncertainty that's now being prolonged. That new eviction moratorium, specifically covering areas with substantial to high COVID spread, lasts about two months. The question now, is that enough time for renters to get the help they need? And what about landlords who have to pay their bills? No, why should I move? The same day Wanda Overton got her first eviction notice, she says her landlord cut the power. If you can put the lights out and cut the water off, what's next? You might change the lock. That was back in April. Today, she's four months behind on rent, pleading her case in Cleveland's housing court. I said, okay, I, I can give you half of the rent. He said he didn't want half of the rent. 
Overton, among millions of Americans facing eviction, now hopeful after the CDC extended an eviction moratorium. The ban, set to expire October 3rd, provides more time for renters to pay and qualify for federal rental assistance, still held up at the state and municipal level. The resources are getting out much too slowly. The White House says the money's there for tenants and landlords, but of the nearly $47 billion set aside by Congress, only $3 billion has been distributed so far. In some communities, unnecessarily complicated applications with burdensome documentation requirements. This is slowing down the process for everybody. Meanwhile, landlords like Aretha Young are fed up. This is their stuff, yeah. This is their stuff that they left over here. She I says the moratorium the ties her hands pay. with non-paying and problem renters, making it harder to cover costs. She paid no rent. See, I got to pay the water bill. I got to pay the uh, taxes on it. And I can't do nothing, neither one of them, you know, without her uh, moving on out and let me get the place renovated. Stephen Gowen reporting there. Some landlords have been forced to sell their properties and get out of the business. Several housing groups are now challenging this new moratorium in court in an effort to protect their livelihoods. The 81st annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally is underway. Up to 700,000 bikers are expected to roll in for what is a 10-day event that began in the Black Hills of western South Dakota. Controversies growing over vendors and the products at the rally. Take a look at this video. Different symbols and flags like swastikas and Confederate flags can be found around the rally at different vendors. One vendor claims this is more about business and giving the cyclists what they want. It's total freedom of speech, and I know I can't make everybody happy. Um, there's always going to be somebody that gets upset with something that I have here. So, you know, a majority of the people are very accepting and, and happy about what I sell and that they can get these items here. The vendor claims the history behind bikers and swastikas go back to World War II when U.S. soldiers would bring back Nazi memorabilia they won in the war to hang on their bikes. Jewish leaders say the symbols represent evil and hate. Twitter has suspended Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene's account once again. The suspension comes after Greene tweeted COVID vaccines were failing and they were ineffective at reducing the virus's spread, both false information. In response, Twitter labeled the tweet as misleading and prevented Green from tweeting for one week. Today's suspension marks at least the third penalty Twitter has imposed on Green for sharing misinformation. New North Carolina COVID-19 numbers just ended the WRAO Live Center. 2,179 people hospitalized now with COVID-19. That is the highest that we have seen in the state since February the 10th. And uh, yesterday's number was adjusted up to 2,006. We've also learned that more than 2,900 cases have been added in the past 24 hours in North Carolina. Nine additional deaths reported. And the state says that the positivity rate right now in testing is 14 percent, which is about three times higher than their target. Back to you. A heads up here, the Federal Emergency Management Agency will be testing its national emergency alert systems tomorrow. Don't be alarmed by this. The agency says it is just part of regular testing. FEMA says the test has been planned for more than a year. Tomorrow at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time, the emergency alert test will be sent to televisions and radios. It will last about one full minute. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center with a look at Doppler radar right now. Yeah, that's right. So we're looking at just a small chance for thunderstorms today. But look at this. We have just a few of those that have started to pop up already. We're going to zoom in and take a quick look. It's a line or a boundary that has formed and it is traveling eastward. Uh, so far, there's some heavy rain with these cells, but they're really tiny. They're not moving very fast, however. So if you find yourself under one of those, say around Anger or back down here around the, say, the northern part of Cumberland County, southern Harnett County, uh, you going to see this maybe lingering for a little bit and we may continue to see these storms developing and redeveloping along this boundary so uh, there's some storms out there not affecting a lot of folks but again uh, especially say the southern part of Harnett northern uh, Cumberland County and some of those even in eastern Wake County right now let's take a look at what's going on out there we're going to take a tour of our radar and our live camera network taking a look at Durham right now a good bit of cloud cover has developed and it is hot out there it's 89 already we'll head over to Goldsboro and we're seeing partly cloudy skies there 87 
57 degrees, and then we'll head back down to our south and west. And uh, it was some showers and thunderstorms just east of Southern Pines, but nothing happening right there at the Longleaf Golf and Family Club. But it is 90 degrees already. Our temperature is on the left, and the dew point is on the right. 77 is our dew point in Raleigh and Durham, 76 in Clinton and Goldsboro. That's one of the highest dew points we really ever see around here. It just doesn't usually get any higher than that. So even though our temperature hasn't even reached 90 yet in uh, Raleigh and Durham, it feels like 102. It feels like 99 in Clinton, 95 in Fayetteville, and 100 in Southern Pines. And it's just noon, and our temperatures will continue to warm up for at least the next three or four hours. And it's not going to stop anytime soon. We'll continue to see very high dew points all the way through Saturday, meaning our heat index will be high. So right now, this adjusted itself down to 101, down from 103 earlier, but it's already feeling like 102, uh, likely to feel like 103, 104 across the area for today. Uh, 106 tomorrow, 105 on Thursday, and then it begins to taper down slowly as we get into the weekend. Um, 106, 105 would put us under the typical threshold for the Weather Service to issue a heat advisory for us. They haven't talked much about it just yet, but we will see. I will let you know if that happens. Certainly, we're going to be right, uh, right on the line. We take a look at it, our potential tropical cyclone number six again, and you can see it is moving closer and closer to Puerto Rico, moving to the northwest at 18 miles per hour with 35 mile per hour winds. Here's a look at that forecast track. Again, we're going to move it all the way out so you can see how it potentially ends up around Florida by the time we get to the weekend. So something we're going to be watching very closely. One of the things that this is running into especially as it moves on up into uh, the, uh, this part of the Caribbean and toward Florida, it's some wind shear. Wind shear tends to tear the tops of storms apart and uh, does not allow them to strengthen as much as if there were low wind shear. We'll add the rain along with this, and it's looking like it's fairly wet, especially once it arrives closer to Florida. Look at all that rain. And then as it moves on up past Georgia and into North Carolina, we're looking at the best chance of rain possibly in the mountains, but we could see some also on Tuesday. It's way, you know, it's way in advance. Uh, we still haven't even seen the storm completely developing yet. So a lot could change with that. What's not likely to change is the heat. It is likely to stay awfully hot for us for the next several days. We'll talk about what other days we'll have a good chance of seeing some thunderstorms coming up. All right, Elizabeth, thank you. Well, North Carolina's coast is home to all kinds of wildlife, but a family never expected to see one of these when it hit the water. Huh. Coming up at 5 on WRL, experts explain what a manatee was doing so far north. Wow. Then at six, as more businesses require vaccines, local schools don't track who has gotten the shot. Cullen Browder investigates the limited oversight for teachers as your kids head back to the classroom. Hey, it's Jamie and Sarah, and we are back with another fresh, sparkly new episode of Wine and Dandy, which leads us nicely into what we're talking about, That's Sarah. right. So refreshing. We're talking about hard seltzers. And I'll tell you what, there are some new ones on the market that may change your mind about hard seltzers. Join us. You can find our podcast at WRALFM.com, as well as your Apple Podcast app, and anywhere you find your podcast. Just look for Wine and Dandy. Once you search and find it and enjoy it, please tell all your friends. Share the link with them. And be sure to follow us, because wine is fun, and we intend to prove it. You may soon be able to purchase your AMC movie ticket using a currency. And Domino's launches a special promotion called Surprise Freeze. Those are among today's business headlines with Maribel Aper. AMC will soon let you buy a movie ticket and snacks with Bitcoin. The theater chain hopes to have the technology in place to accept the digital currency by the end of the year. Customers would order tickets and concessions online and pay with Bitcoin at all AMC theaters in the U.S. And the chain also plans to accept Apple and Google Pay as well. McDonald's is partnering with rapper Sweetie on its latest celebrity meal. It's available now for a limited time and includes a Big Mac, chicken nuggets, fries, and a Sprite. Sweetie says she's been a McDonald's fan from when she was growing up in California. The meal is the latest in the chain's famous orders promotions. McDonald's has partnered with Travis Scott, Jay Balvin, and K-pop group BTS on others. Domino's will surprise customers with random giveaways of food. Order on Domino's website and you may get a menu item like pizza or chocolate lava cakes added at no cost. The promotion takes a shot at delivery apps like DoorDash and Uber Eats that tack on hidden fees. Domino's is calling its promotion Surprise Freeze. It says its delivery fee is straightforward and transparent. It's vowing to give away $50 million of free food between now and November 21st. And those are your business headlines. I'm Maribel Aber on the Money Desk. 
More consumer news. More than a dozen infant formulas are recalled over iron concerns. Able Group recalled about 76,000 containers of its infant formula. The products were sold through the Little Bundle website. According to the FDA, many of the products contain less than one milligram of the iron per 100 calories. That means it may not contain the proper amount of iron for infants. Buyers might start getting a break when it comes to used car prices. According to Mannheim, a used car retailer, the average price of a pre-owned vehicle was $19,482 in July. 2.6% lower than the month before. In addition to prices slowly falling, reports say demand is down as well. Well, time now, 1226. Millions of dollars will hit parents' accounts this Friday. Up ahead, we're joined by the experts to learn how the child tax credit could impact you this coming tax season and what you can do now to plan for the filing period. Plus, seven states banning mask mandates in schools. See how school leaders there are preparing for the school semester and how districts here in North Carolina compare. And here's a quick look at the winning lottery numbers. Good luck. Your number one source for local news. This is WRAL, coverage you can count on. We continue to follow breaking news of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's resignation. Yeah, this all comes after an investigation found he sexually harassed multiple women. Brian Schrader is in the WRL Live Center with this breaking news story. Brian. A shock in the political world, a shock in New York State. We are looking live at pictures from Manhattan where we are awaiting Governor Andrew Cuomo to leave his New York office to return to the state capitol. It was only about 20 minutes ago during a live speech that Cuomo announced that he was resigning, embroiled in this sexual harassment scandal. He says it takes effect in 14 days. In that speech, he says that he never intentionally disrespected women, and he said that he made mistakes. Listen to this. I take full responsibility for my actions. I have been too familiar with people. My sense of humor can be insensitive and off-putting. I do hug and kiss people casually, women and men. I have done it all my life. It's who I've been since I can remember. In my mind, I've never crossed the line with anyone. But I didn't realize the extent to which the line has been redrawn. Now, he also was rather defiant in this speech. He said that the allegations were politically motivated. He said it was in his nature to fight this. But he said that that would consume government over weeks and months of uh, going back and forth. And he said that stepping down right now was the best way that he could help New Yorkers. Uh, Who is going to step in here? Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul is going to succeed Cuomo. She's a Democrat from the Buffalo area, and she will become New York's first female governor. Uh, The New York Times just pointed out that the last elected governor of New York, Elliot Spitzer, also resigned in the middle of that investigation that revealed that he was a client of a high-end prostitution ring. David Patterson, the lieutenant governor, then became governor, becoming New York's first black governor. So again, Andrew Cuomo's resignation takes effect in 14 days. going to be a very interesting two weeks on the political scene. Back to you. Big news there, Brian. Thank you. Well, investigators in Hope County are searching for a suspect after a triple shooting that injured one person and left two others dead. About an hour ago, the sheriff's office released the names of the two people who died. WRL's Gilbert Bays is live at the ball fields and sl- splash pad where that shooting happened. Gilbert? Well, Jeff and Renee, I talked with Sheriff Hubert Peterkin about 90 minutes ago, and he said what happened out here last night was drug-related. And we want to show you what's left here. You can see these tire marks here. This is where investigators tell us that the vehicles were, and they sped off and led out of here after that shooting. Now, that splash pad right there, that was closed at the time. But we're told that there were kids on that softball field playing softball when those shots rang out. 
Now, the investigation started last night about 7 o'clock at this recreation center. When investigators got here, they found several shell casings uh, in the parking lot, and they started talking to witnesses. At that time, they got a second 911 call that said the victims of the shootings here had driven to the Piney Bay Mobile Home Park, which is also on Shannon Road, not far from the ballpark. When authorities arrived at that location, they found 25-year-old Nicoya Maynard and 22-year-old Zyreek Grace in the vehicles. They were dead at that location. The third victim in this case is 20 years old. His name not being released at this time. He remains in the hospital, we're told, with non-life-threatening injuries. Folks who use this area are just shocked. You would think that a splash pad and a public place in broad daylight would be a safe space to bring your children to play and be kids and enjoy the summertime. And so it was really disheartening for me especially. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so we don't have many options as far as where can I take the kids. Well, investigators still looking for at least one suspect who they say will be charged with two counts of first degree murder and one charge for shooting that individual who remains in the hospital. Makaya and Jeff right now, the chef uh, office still trying to put together some information on that individual that they're looking for. They're asking anyone who has information about what happened out here last night to give the whole county sheriff's office a call. Gilbert Bay is live for us in Hope County this noon. Gilbert, thank you. Also new at noon, a man shot several times in a late night shooting in a Raleigh neighborhood has died. Raleigh police identified the man as 30-year-old Robert Earl Taylor. He was found with multiple gunshot wounds last night on Boyer Street just before 1030. Taylor was taken to the hospital where he later died. No arrests have been made in the case and investigators are asking the community for information. And now to our vaccine headlines. If you need your COVID-19 shot, you can stop by a pop-up clinic in Orange County without an appointment. The health department is holding the clinic at the Gateway Village Apartments on Lakeside Drive in Hillsboro. Experts will be on hand to give out shots from 6 to 8.30 p.m. this evening. The clinic was rescheduled from last week because of weather. And across the state, more children are being sent to the hospital with COVID-19. That prompted us to check the situation here in the Triangle. One out of every five COVID-19 cases reported involves a child in North Carolina. At last check, there are no pediatric COVID patients at Duke Children's Hospital. There are two at Wake Med and four are being treated at UNC Medical Center. Today, three local school systems will decide whether to make masks mandatory in the classroom this fall. Leaders at Cumberland County Schools met this morning to consider that mandate. The Warren County School Board will do the same later today, and previously the district had not required masks during the school day except on buses. The Roanoke Rapids Graded School District also is weighing a mandate today. Several school systems have not decided yet what to do about masks. They're highlighted in green on this map. The systems in red, including Wake County, are making them mandatory. The ones in yellow have made them optional. Last night, Franklin and Vance counties chose to require masks. Moore County will keep them until the end of September, and not everyone is happy about that. The motion carries four to three. Thank you. Not real popular as you hear the parents booing as the Moore County School Board decided to keep masks in place. Now the board says it will reconsider that mandate October 4th. Today, Wake County Schools is hosting a job fair to hire bus drivers. School leaders are even offering extra money to sweeten the deal. The school board has signed off on a $1,200 signing bonus with several bonuses offered within a year of work. The virtual job fair started a couple of hours ago. You can sign up online at the Wake Schools website. And Durham Public Schools is hoping to, that sign-on bonuses will attract new employees to a job fair as well. The school system hopes to hire more than 300 people. Most positions will receive a $3,500 sign-on bonus, but that could go up as much as $8,000 depending on the school, grade level, and field of study. The job fair starts at 4 p.m. We have a link to register for it on WORL.com. Well, time now, 1237. Millions of American children are in line to get a second federal child tax credit. After the break, we'll talk with an expert to find out what parents need to know. And a new study reveals that children notice race many years before adults want to talk about it. How name discrimination is showing up in elementary schools. And for news, weather and traffic of the day, make sure to download the WORL News app. 
Parents of about 60 million American children are in line to receive a second payment this Friday as part of the federal child tax credit. The Biden administration's American Rescue Plan touts it as a way to help support families during the pandemic. How will it affect parents come tax time, though? Certified public accountant Ben Mickham joins us right now to answer some of those questions. Ben, as always, we thank you for joining us. Should parents be worried about the payment affecting their tax returns? Well, so it's, you know, it's a complicated thing that you, you just want to be, first of all, aware of how much you're getting now. So the IRS is advancing your credit for your child. The first thing is that um, if your child's under 17 and your income is under 400000 as a married couple, you're going to get $2,000 per child. Um, if your income is under 150000 for that 17-year-old, you're child tax credit goes up to 3000 and if your kid is five years old or under, it goes up to 3600 So there's different amounts. And since you're getting these credits ahead of time, it's going to reduce your refund on the return or the amount you, uh, it may increase the amount you owe on your return because you're, like I said, you're getting this prepaid. You also may not qualify for it when you do your return. So there's a lot of things to pay attention to. What about parents uh, who, it? if you had a child in 2021, uh, can, can yeah. you enroll now or do you have to wait until tax season for that? Uh, you can enroll. I mean, you'd have to go to the irs.gov site and actually tr pay attention on how you would do that. One thing you can do is if you, the IRS is pretty much automatically sending this money out if you qualify based on your 2020 return. And if you're getting the money and you don't think you should be getting it because you don't qualify for it, you can go on the IRS site and stop that re, uh, the prepayments. Because once again, you may have to pay it back. So I've been telling clients, hey, put it off to the side. You might as well get the money, earn a little bit of interest, whether you, you, know, whether you um, are, are due it or not. But that, again, you just got to know what, how much you're getting. And, and it has to get reconciled on the 2021 return. Ben, we got a few seconds here. Is that the opt-out uh, part of the payment? Uh, Why would they want to do that, though? Again, opt-out so you don't get it ahead of time. It can reduce how much your refund will be because you're going ahead and getting it now. So it could just kind of mess up the fact that you could owe more um, because you're getting it ahead of time. Um, so, and again, you're getting it. You may not ha um, have it due to you when you do your taxes. So there's just kind of those things to look at. I would go to the irs.gov site. And it'll give you these scenarios um, as to whether you think you should opt out. We haven't really been telling people to opt out. So normally speaking, I would just say not to. I get it. These are the ones uh, you, you said it's tricky. Go to the website and uh, check it out. Ben Mickham, CPA, thank you so much for being with us today and sorting some of that out for us. You're welcome. Time now, 1243. What's in a name? Maybe it's a namesake for a relative or rooted in your culture. For some children, it can be the earliest type of racism. Up next, how to talk to children about name discrimination. This Forward Together Changemakers segment is presented by Duke Health. Stronger together, Duke Health stands against racism. Children notice race many years before adults want to talk about it. That's the result of a 2020 study from the American Psychological Association. In today's Forward Together segment, I found out how name discrimination can start as early as elementary school. Triangle experts who studied racism say it's never too early to talk to your kids. Children are not too young to have these conversations because they're not too young to cause the harm. Dr. Rhonda Taylor Bullock found that one of the earliest types of racism kids are facing is name discrimination. That's when their names are made fun of or completely avoided because they are labeled as too ethnic or difficult. Grace Ngolngolwa knows exactly what that's like, and she's only nine. So what's it like when someone gets your name right? I feel really happy that, I feel like really happy they um, found the effort to try and practice it and um, really put work into it instead of being like, okay, I'll practice every once in a while. A couple of years ago, Grace asked her parents if she was allowed to change her Tanzanian last name to something easier for students who were making fun of her. We as a family have the onus to kind of, we need to be building that cultural pride. In an effort to do that, they enrolled Grace in Dr. Taylor Bullock's five-day anti-racism student program. Um, on day one, we talk about the importance of names. 
and learning to pronounce people's names correctly. And so we're arming kids with these phrases of how to push back and advocate for themselves. We're also showing them what it looks like to make a mistake mm-hmm. and to apologize for it. Gracie's parents immediately saw a difference and even learned something themselves. If someone mispronounces your name, does not take the effort, tells you it's difficult, that is their mistake, that is lazy, that is on them, you know, and it is not on you. But you can teach people how to say your name. If more families start having these conversations sooner, there's hope that this subject won't come up in class. And to find out how to involve your kids in an anti-racism program, head over to our website, WREL.com. Back here in the WRIO Live Center, another huge story this morning. The Senate passed that $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill by a bipartisan vote, 69 to 30. Nineteen Republicans said yes, including North Carolina's two U.S. senators, both of whom are Republican. Tom Tillis yesterday tweeted that the bipartisan infrastructure bill is a win for North Carolina. Richard Burr also voted yes this morning. Now, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are going to be speaking about that bill at 1.30 from the White House. You can watch that live on the WRL News app and WRL.com. Taking a look at dual Doppler 5000 radar again, we checked in with us about 30 minutes ago and saw just a few tiny cells starting to develop. We now have a little bit of lightning there in the central part of Harnett County. We even have a severe thunderstorm that's up near Roanoke, Virginia. Now, that's a long way from us, and it does look like we'll have more activity up near the Virginia line today. I wouldn't expect to see severe thunderstorms here. It wouldn't be completely out of the question, but I wouldn't expect us to see widespread severe storms. Let's zoom in a little bit more, and you can see just south and east of Lillington, a little cluster here that's producing some lightning and that's a change since we checked in last time about half an hour ago. Uh, otherwise, we're seeing just a few isolated cells here and there and we also are seeing uh, it's almost a line that's developed here along an old boundary and you can see that just to the west of Smithfield, past Clayton and Wendell and continuing up to the north and east. So don't be surprised if you see an isolated thunderstorm, even some brief heavy rain this afternoon. We'll continue to see that on and off until we get to sunset or so. Let's take a look. Here's Goldsboro. We have Apex, Chapel Hill and Durham. Um, nothing popping up here. Most of it is south and east. So Goldsboro, you may end up seeing some of that. And we're seeing it, of course, uh, really along this stationary boundary. This is what we call a trough. It acts like a weak front. And we did expect thunderstorms to develop along it today. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So here's a look. Here's that trough. Here's a look at uh, 5 o'clock this evening. You can see just a little bit of patchy uh, thunderstorm activity or showers that develop along it. You can see the same thing on Wednesday. This particular uh, boundary just lingers all week long and becomes a uh, focus for some thunderstorms again Thursday and Friday. So every afternoon this week, we also have a front that'll drop in on us late in the weekend, and that may help to cool things down a little bit for say Monday and Tuesday and help bring a better chance for storms. Today it's a 20% chance, but we're already seeing some of those popping up out there. 30% Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and a 20% chance on Saturday. Again, here's our potential tropical cyclone waiting to see if it will end up being a tropical storm, which could happen this afternoon as winds at 35 miles per hour and it is moving off to the west at about 18 miles per hour. Look how tightly packed together the computer models are. That tends to give us a high confidence in a storm, but it hasn't even become a tropical storm yet. So a lot could happen with this. It's going to have some interaction with some of these larger islands of the Caribbean, and that could help weaken it a little bit. One thing that could help strengthen it more, though, is the fact that it's sitting over warmer than normal ocean temperatures. Those sea surface temperatures, all that warm energy from the ocean water is the fuel for these storms. And so we do expect it to go ahead and develop into a tropical storm by later on this afternoon and evening. Boy, the heat stays with us for the rest of the week. Temperatures are in the low 90s for highs for the next five or six days. And the heat index will feel more like 103 to 105. So take it easy out there through the afternoon. We're looking at some cooler temperatures as we get into Sunday and Monday with a little better chance for some scattered thunderstorms. We'll be right back. Stay with us. An elephant herd has fascinated people around the world with its year-long journey into China. And now they seem to be headed home. Now now drones and researchers have captured their movements for miles. That's all new at four. Today's pet of the day is looking for a down-to-earth roommate who pays all the rent and shares all the love. This is Benjamin, a five-year-old domestic short hair cat. Wake County Animal Center says Benjamin is neutered, vaccinated, and microchipped. Benjamin's description reads, I'll be your buddy, let you scratch my head, nap on your couch, and I'll make biscuits in my bed. If you want to be Benjamin's buddy, contact Wake County Animal Center. 
And as we wrap up things, here's a look at a few headlines we're following today. News that broke at this noon hour, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has resigned. An investigative report released last week said Cuomo had sexually harassed women and violated state laws. In his resignation speech, Cuomo apologized to women he had offended, saying he didn't realize the lines had been redrawn. His resignation is effective in two weeks. The number of people hospitalized with coronavirus keeps rising. New numbers out in the last hour show 2,179 people in the hospital in North Carolina. That's 233 people admitted yesterday and the most we've seen at one time since February. And Carvana is banned from selling cars in Wake County for the rest of 2021. The North Carolina DMV revoked Carvana's dealer's license for violating laws. Issues included selling a car without an inspection and failure to deliver the title to the DMV. Carvana's license in Wake County is suspended until the end of January 2022. We'll continue to follow those developing headlines and much more on WRL News when we return at 4. You can also get breaking news updates anytime with our WRL News app. Make it a good day.